right. Well, welcome back to the Farm Life Show here at Seven Sons. This is going to be a fun episode. We have a special guests that we're honored to have uh, with us. And really the uh, the question on this episode that we're framing here is, uh, why would a 17-year, very successful uh, Army veteran uh, who's been a captain in the Army decide to begin transitioning, pursuing a new career in regenerative agriculture? It's a very... It's been a very inspiring uh, time to have uh, Gil here with us uh, this entire week. Gil DeLeon, De I'm saying that correctly. Uh, Gil, according on your uh, LinkedIn uh, profile, you are an aspiring regenerative agriculture leader, farmer, and a 17-year transitioning military officer and combat vet served in Iraq and Afghanistan. Um, So this is an inspiring story. Uh, We're going to kind of get into how we kind of met you and how this week came to be that you're staying with us right here on the farm for an entire week learning about regenerative agriculture. Um, But I wanted to give you a chance just to introduce yourself, share us a little about your story, your career uh, in the Army, and really what led up to inspiring you to change a career path. I think people that are either listening to other farmers that are aspiring to be regenerative farmers, this will be inspiring for them to to hear, but also just our customers and listeners that maybe uh, are scared of a career shift. Uh, what was that motivation that, that you know, brought you down this path to where you are here at Seven Sons today? Absolutely. And, and Blaine and, and Blake, thank you for the introduction. One, thank you for having me here. Um, it's therapeutic at best, but to your question, um, 17 years, 13 years active duty, uh, four or five years reserve time. And bottom answer is, what is my next calling to serve? So I, I defended our, our Constitution, it, it protected our freedom. Now I would like to provide the same service, but to feed our local Americans and veterans, but regeneratively. So I think jumping into regenerative agriculture is a second calling for me. And my goal is to surround myself with people like you to educate to do that successfully and i would love to bring young aspiring farmers and ranchers to include veterans to enter this industry and to show them that hey this is a guy that know nothing about agriculture i can barely spell the word cow Mm -hmm. but the more i learn the more i surround myself with people smarter than me the easier it is and i realize hey that anxiety shouldn't be that high those barriers are easily removed once i educate myself and surround people that are smarter than me um, so that's why I'm trying to transition and to the lifestyle that the farming and ranching brings to the family yeah. after 17 years of service. Yeah, yeah. that's cool. Even go back a little further. Uh, when did your um, service, uh, and thank you for your service, when did that begin? When did that career begin for you? And how did it uh, transition uh, okay. up until uh, captain, current, currently okay. the captain, correct? Great question. Um, so I was born into this, right? My dad retired, you know, Mass Sergeant in the United States Army. He was an Abrams operator in Desert Storm um, veteran. And then from there, like anybody else, most kids will join the military because of their father. Just like most farmers become farmers and ranchers because of their father. Very true. So yeah. I did the same thing. I joined right, at the hi- right out of high school. You know, I listened to the National Guard as a thorough and bravo or, or military police and human resource specialist. And then went to college on a RNC scholarship while I was serving and enlisting in the Guard. And from there, I transitioned to become an officer. And then back, I became a cavalry officer in 2010 and an armor officer. So I spent a couple of years on tanks and Bradleys. Um, those, were ho- those were modern horses. Back in the day, yep. cavalry officers in the Teddy Roosevelt time would use horses. So this is the reason why I'm wearing a cowboy hat now because I wore it in the military. Now I get to continue that legacy, but this time civilian steps in to include the butt buckle. Um, and then I spent some time in the light formations in the 82nd, jumping on airplanes for like six or seven years. And then I operated as a team leader in a security forces assistant brigade in North Carolina. And then my last most recent job, I was an aide de camp to a two star general. So I got a lot of exposure to the executive leadership and how the Army truly operates and uh, generates its forces. So that brings me up till now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Blake was sharing with me, um, and you can share the story as detailed as you'd like to, but uh, Blake was sharing with me there was a point in which you realized you for sure wanted to make a transition uh, in your career. Right. Um, and uh, it had to do with uh, some extra time spent um, overseas that you weren't planning on and with uh, some family changes. Do you want, even you can be as, as uh, specific or just um, as general as you'd like with kind of that story. I thought it was really inspiring. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I'll keep you short without too many details. But uh, yes, yeah, so my last deployment, 
It was a great deployment. We had um, several combat patrols, and this is the deployment that I missed another birth of my child. I have six kids, and she was Congrats. seven months uh, when I met her, but for to me, she was like a month old, right? And yep. uh, so my, when I came back, my wife was like, "Hey, here you go. Here is another kid of yours." But it was it was no connection. It was it was no connection at all. And you get used to that, that's got to be hard. It is hard. You get used to being able to disconnect, reconnect, um, how to reintegrate into the family, which is great. That's a skill set that most people don't have, and I'm proud of that. But I'm also tired of that um, yeah and i love the military i adore the military but i think it's time for a change and to change the 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 family tree of my, of my family i need to do something that allows me to do that stay home all the time mm-hmm. and ranching does that if my kid got to find me i'm probably you know in the back 40 fixing the fence or doing something they can easily get on the four wheeler and come to me because i'm always there yep. yeah um and that's that was it's really appeals to me yeah yeah and farming and ranching yeah no that's cool that's a big deal um you forget about the sacrifices that are that are made and uh, i have six kids as well uh blake has five so uh, imagining missing uh you know the the birth of a new child and meeting them um you know uh later in life uh or as as they're a couple months old already um is uh, yeah i i can see how that would inspire a shift or a change. Yeah. So, um, that's, that's cool. Well, do you want to share, um, kind of what led up to, well, and I can share actually how we were actually introduced to you, Gil. Yeah, uh, we have been working with the folks from understanding ag and soil health Academy with our, which are regenerative educational, regenerative leaders, um, and have been, uh, names like Dr. Alan Williams, Gabe Brown, They've been to our farm multiple times. We've done soil health academies here at Seven Suns. So we've really developed a, a rapport with those guys um, for a while. And, and Alan, Dr. Allen reached out to us a couple weeks ago and uh, put out this vision um, that I know now you're a big part of um, right. and really we're, we're the instigation behind this, this vision that they're calling uh, battlefields to fertile fields. Um, can you share what that vision is for that program and, and uh, what you guys are working on right now? I, was, I would try to share the uh, best I can. This is the best analogy that I keep telling Blake is like we're building a plane in flight. Like this plane is in the air with burly wings attached, right? Yep. Where it's, I'm, the, I'm the critical participant, brand new program, and we're trying to get to the point where it creates a pipeline for seasoned military service members to come into the industry of agriculture because they already have the, the management and leadership experience. But all this is is the, the, the program to educate the veterans how to run a successful business in farming and ranching, but regeneratively. Yeah. And how I came up to meeting them was just like anything else in life, when you're trying to uh, change or transition to a different industry or a completely different culture, you're going to educate yourself. Like, hey, what's out there? What is, what is ranching? What is farming? What is it going to take to get out there? And I saw this huge movement in regenerative agriculture. I didn't know what that was. All I knew was tractor, um, big red barn, you know, the romantic side of ranching and yeah. farming. That was yep. what I was going for. I was like, yes, I want that. And I realized that is a lot of money. So what are other options? And then regenerative agriculture popped up, and Dr. Allen Williams popped up, Kathy from Soil Health Academy. And I was like, maybe this is the way to reduce a lot of that barrier. So like, all right, let me do some research. I found a workshop. I applied for it. Donors were able to help offset the cost. Mm-hmm. And I was like, hey, this is the way to do it. And like anything else, you got to go head first. You can't be afraid. You just jump in. Yep. So I did that. Went to New Mexico. And man, what an eye opener. My eyes were trained. I was just reaffirmed that this is my next calling. And mm-hmm. there, and, and like, even this week with you guys, uh, you, just, you keep reaffirming every single day, this is my next calling. This is the way to help the local community and to include veterans into this entry. Um, so if you guys read the book called Five Love Languages, right? Yes. I'm still yep. working on that and I'm getting better with the words of affirmation. And I'll be honest here, I, it's hard for me to even give words of affirmation to my own wife, right? Mm-hmm. It's, it's very hard. Mm-hmm. Welcome to the club. Yeah, yep. welcome. <laughs> welcome. It's, it's hard, man. We just, man, we, we are tail it. Yeah. But um, once I finished the course, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to practice this words of affirmation and send a note to not just Kathy, but to every person, every instructor in Soil Academy. And that's what led to this. That thank you note is what changed the game mm-hmm. and connecting and establishing rapport with the network. So I did that. Um, Ron Nichols, who's like the publisher in social mm-hmm. media and social health academic, called, hey, we would love to hear your story. Um, can we do a piece on you? And I'm like, 
Ron, tell me more. I'm not sure what you're asking here. Yeah. But absolutely. And so tell my story. And it was published. And then uh, Dr. Alan Williams read the article, talked to it. I'm, I'm sure they were socializing. How can we help this guy? And I guess Dr. Williams was trying to find a way to create a pipeline for veterans to come into the industry. And they just happened to find me. It was it was like a, a faithful event, right? And all that started with a thank you note. Yep. So the guys that are starting out there, man, write thank you notes all <laughs> day. What yep. is information? Um, uh, showing gratitude. You got to be out there. You got to go seek. You got to find his connections, not just build relationships, but build rapport. Yep. Because it's not about who you know, it's who knows you. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And that's what helped me get here. So, who came up with the term from battlefields to fertile fields? That's such a it's an inspiring uh, program it, name. It is. I want to give credit to Ron. Yeah. Ron Nichols. Um, so, okay. there's another program out there uh, that Texas A&M does called Break Ground to Battleground or Battleground Ground to Breaking Ground. Okay. It's great, but it doesn't. Um, resonate with restoring the soils yeah so in afghanistan when i was doing the patrols the ground there the soils there were completely degraded yep certified yeah i was so uh, shocked at how these trucks you see on the roads with fruits and vegetables like how that where are you getting that from because when you're in a vehicle high ground you you see land is nowhere how they're producing how is the land collaborating right where are they getting it from Mm -hmm. um so i'm like all right this is the way and then there's a lot of land in the United States that looked like Afghanistan, right? Terrible land, degraded, so how to restore. Um, so you are the first, uh, uh, I guess, veteran to go through this program, this transition program that, that you guys are literally forming as you're going through it. As we go. And your vision is to, is to take the Patan and partner with uh, uh, Soil Health Academy to help help get this program off the ground, partner with the service, like an actual accredited partnership. Right correct, with the military or the Army um, to, to be a program that's accredited, that they can send. That's right, Blaine. Um, so we got, just to get this pilot program um, up and running, we had to get certified through the Army. Yep. Dr. Allen was able to put a quick micro training schedule, and then it got approved. And, I mean, there were, even the Army was shocked, like, whoa, what are you doing? Because mm-hmm. usually when you do a skill bridge or a transition program, it's within the state you're in or within 50-mile radius but once I briefed them, all locations I'm going is like, what, what's going on here? So Dr. Alan Williams was able to articulate what's going on. Yep. yep. So you're correct. I am the first guy doing this, and we're literally building this this plan in flight. Blazing the a first, trail. And, and <laughs> Seven Sons is the first, is ho- it gets the privilege of hosting the first yes. intern through this program as yes. the first farm uh, to, to help kick this off. Yes. I, we're just excited uh, about that. Um, you guys are catapulting it. So I feel sorry for any other farmer rancher after you guys. Because so, you guys you're you're going to enjoy it. You're, you're on tour, right? Yeah, yeah, so, tour. so you're on a three month tour. This kicks off a three month tour throughout the country. Do you want to explain kind of uh, what, what it looks like as you leave uh, Seven Sons? Absolutely. Um, and again, remember this plan is still being developed. Um, there's a couple of ranches and farms I'm going to in Ohio, back to North Carolina, hopefully down to Georgia and Texas. Mm-hmm. But where the plan sits right now is three months on a row. That's what I've been approved for, three to four months on the road, visiting regenerative ranchers and farmers and seasoned agglers like you guys. But as right now, I'm going to Ohio to visit... Uh, David uh, Brandt. David, David Brandt. Brandt. Yes. Um, yes. Uh, one of the co-founders of, you know... Soil, Soil Health Academy. Academy. Yep. And then Adam Graves at the... Um, North Carolina, North right? North Carolina. Yeah. And then hopefully um, confirm Will Ferris at, you know, White Oaks. White Oaks, White Oaks uh, Pastures. Pastures. We just visited there last uh, last year, right? Yeah, it was like uh, July or August. Yeah, uh, yeah. You'll, you love, awesome. you'll love that. You so. guys awesome. I should be learning from you guys, too, for your experience over there. We're, and then you're heading from there, from Georgia. We're going to try to go east or question uh, south and west back towards um, uh, Montana and Idaho. And okay. So, like, you got at. an eastern deployment and then a western deployment? That's what they're calling <laughs> it. Eastern deployment, western deployment. And then as I take the long corridor south of the United States, we'll have strategic stops. Obviously, it's still being worked on, and Dr. Alan Williams has been critical developing this plan. And again, remember, it's the first time. He's trying to figure out for the first time. He's really busy, Mm -hmm. Um, and we're trying to just build this plan as we go. And what's the – there's a Buffalo Ranch you're going to be on. Was that the the Ted Turner Ranch? Ted Turner Ranches. Yes. Yes, They – according to Dr. Williams, they were willing to host me for a little over a month. Yeah, um, that's cool. And we're still locking those dates in, but I'm looking forward to that. So what comes after um, after that tour is finished for you? So I got several more months. Uh, my official date of transition from the service is 01 February, where I become a civilian. But I'm still going to transition to the Reserve or National Guard to finish my last couple of years to get the retirement. Mm-hmm. Um, but And then hopefully there are a couple 
opportunities lined up that I'm unable to share right now. Okay. Yep. But uh, to be somewhere, a ranch manager somewhere, mm-hmm. uh, and help restore some of the land out there. Yeah. Yeah. No, oh, cool. Um, next question I wanted to uh, transition to was, um, okay, so, so if someone's listening and – uh, can, can you give them some advice that if they're just beginning uh, their research into you know, a possible transition or looking at a career and and starting in regenerative farming? What you know? What so far? I know you're early. You're 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 just getting started in right. your journey. But what have you learned so far? What would be your biggest takeaways uh, to give someone a leg up on uh, where to begin their journey? Okay, the biggest take is um, self initiative and establishing a network. Yeah. Um, you hear all kinds of books and podcasts and TED Talks like network, network, network. But until you actually go through it and make the connections, you're going to see how true that is. Mm-hmm. Um, and then um, the education. The education, like, yes, the number one barrier besides um, the education is capital cost. But if you go for general, you can reduce a lot of that. Yeah, yeah. There's absolutely. a lot of resources out there for the inspiring young guys to help, help um, remedy this agriculture crisis we're currently going in. And veterans is to seek education and seek connection. That hopefully I can be that connection for them. Mm-hmm. So if anybody listening out there, for the young aspiring farmers, and ranchers, and veterans, reach out to me. Um, yep. Reach out to Seven Sons, see how they facilitated my journey, because mm-hmm. that's what it takes. And I don't believe in like we can feed the whole world. That makes no sense. Yep. We can we can only feed the world communities at a time. One community at a time. Um, yep. So that's my goal is to help inspire people. I'm not. I don't got all the answers because I'm still learning myself. Mm-hmm. But uh, and the reason I'm trying to broadcast my journey is to want to hold myself accountable, but also to inspire young guys. Hey, you can do this. Yep. Yo, I was scared too. I did not want to do this. My wife is really scared about this journey because we're leaving the comfort of a st- st- stable paycheck yeah. in housing. Yes, but, that, that's, 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 that's great. That was one of my questions was that you, you're looking at this as your second calling, which is, I right. think it's phenomenal. Right. Um, and but, this is not an easy, uh, you know, this is something not easy to start. I mean, that's, yeah. there's, there's a reason that there isn't many new farmers and the average age of farmer is 60 plus years old. Right, right. Um, so this is, this is a brave endeavor and, and that's why we're, and we're passionate seven sons to share because we want to see more regenerative farms and, and we're not keeping trade secrets here. You know, right. we're, and it's part of the reason we do this podcast is right. for others to learn, to see what's going on. So, uh, uh, what's been the highlights, uh, this week, what have you been doing? on the farm absolutely um one thank you you guys are truly paying it for you guys are tr- not only ag leaders but y'all, y'all are servant leaders and um so what i have been doing a little bit of everything you know um from learning the every aspect of the operations from like the operations logistics sustainment yep social media by the way had no idea it was that complex yep the marketing what drives your business and mm-hmm. how to connect business to your consumers was the first time i learned here yep. and it took a lot to unpack like man it ain't about moving the cattle. It's, yep. it's yeah, you want to restore the soil and, and regenerate it. But in order to make that happen, you got to have consumers. You can't just have yes. cows graze all day. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Great because it's just such a chance over grazing, over impacting. Yep. So you got to get them out. But in order to get them out, you have to have a, a social media platform. Yep. That's a social media. Mm-hmm. So that's, that's what I learned. I met all your brothers and all your brothers are very intelligent and they can articulate their business and and. If I was to plan the next battlefield, the first field, the next veteran, as of right now, this is the go-to mm-hmm. to catapult their journey because you are able to every day give structure and give a specific aspect. Hey, today we're going to learn about some statement. Today we're going to mm-hmm. learn about cold storage. Today we're going to learn about carcasses. Um, there, stuff like that. There's so much. I know uh, Dr. Alan Williams wrote an article that uh, – basically said like you you basically have to consider yourself an astronaut by the, how many things you have to know to be a regenerative farmer and right. to connect with those consumers and, and we have customers that um well many times thank us for what we do but it's it's really we feel like we're, you know we're the, we're indebted to them without them we would not be able to do uh, what we do without their support That's right. um because when you know we realize that when Back in the day when we were just producing commodities, it was faster, fatter, bigger, cheaper, yeah. and you're paid on quantity, not right. quality. And the minute we transitioned to a focus on quality, we realized we have to, uh, you know, we have to opt out of the commodity system that That's doesn't right. reward quality and find 
uh, folks that value what we value. So um, oh, I, I agree, Blaine. And um, to the conversation that me and Blake had over the multiple breakfast trips we had and dinners, he keeps talking about like the leadership, right? Being humble. And mm-hmm. if you're the smartest person in the room, you're in the wrong spot. It's it's being humble enough to know that you don't know nothing. Yeah. And if you do know something, you still don't know nothing. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. it's never it's never being satisfied. Um, that's the only way you guys are going to succeed. And you guys have that in spades. The, and I, and that's my another advice is you got to be uh, leadership is a relationship. Um, yep. No difference between leadership and management. But if you really want to succeed in farming, obviously I'm not there yet, but yep. I can see in you guys is being servant, holding each other accountable and learning from others mm-hmm. and knowing that you don't know nothing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. Always taking that position. Always taking that position. Yep. Never be satisfied. Yep. And we've learned so much by just having you here um, on this visit. Uh, we talk about leadership and, and we think it's, you know, business, business specific. And it's right. not. It's it's, not. It, it applies at home. And the stuff that you've been able to share with us just on some leadership right. uh, that you've developed over your 17-year career in the Army has been very helpful for us. So thank you for, oh, wow. uh, for sharing that. I'm so. glad you learned something from me. <laughs> <laughs> so your second calling so, calling. so what, what does your, uh, what does your family, what are your kids and your wife? I mean, she's been uh, so, so committed and yeah. standing beside you through your, your army career. Mm-hmm. Uh, obviously this is a, a new, a new path, a new calling. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I mean, that's gotta be a sense of, you know, a lot of change there. So it is. It is. I mean, the kids are always excited, right? What kids yeah, not want right. to ride a pony or a horse <laughs> uh, because they, they're young and they think that the romantic side, oh, I get to move yeah. chickens. Yep. And I'm going to keep that like that so yep. they can be excited. Yes. <laughs> yep. um, but uh, as for the wife, like any other wife, any person that runs the house, because, you know, as, like your wives are the heartbeat of the family and the yep. backbone of the operation. Um, she has her natural concerns, just like men are the provider. They have natural concerns. Yes, where are we going to live at? How are yep. we going to do this? Where is our first paycheck coming from? Yep. But you have to jump in with faith. You have to do it. And you're kind of forced to prioritize what's really, what really do we need and along to a full, or a roof over our head and food in order to successfully establish a farm business, just like you guys have, you got to start small yep. and we'll work with that way out. Um, if I don't end up getting a, mas- a management position out, out, out of my program here, mm-hmm. um, I will start small. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And, and I'll take you now. You, you guys will be my consultants. And that's how it began. <laughs> that's how it began for us. And, it, and you had to really um, be sold out to that to the uh, to the vision and the why behind it uh, this was not this was when our parents made a transition uh it was not an economic a reason at all it because it, it, it was it was a struggle uh for sure to get started um which I would, is why i would say the first several years if you looked at it that transition uh from economic model and look at our finances we should have given up yeah the accountant would have said get, give it up but um but and that's why too uh, we are we do feel compelled to help others along this journey and, uh, you know, yeah, sure. and it goes back to what Gil said for advice, um, you know, reach out, visit right. farms and Blaine, we've talked about that before. That was one of our biggest mistakes yeah. early on was, you know, 20 years ago, there wasn't as much out there, but there was still farms to visit. We could have learned. And, um, sometimes I think we just tried to figure it all out ourselves and yeah. it ends up being, we end up paying for it. Yeah. <laughs> you pay for your education no matter what. Yeah, that's, that's right. That's yeah. Right. That's right. Cool. Well, so battlefields to fertile fields, um, this three month tour that you're on, how can, um, our customers and followers keep up to date with you? Absolutely. They can follow me on my YouTube channel called battlefield to fertile fields. And, um, my name is Gilbert. Dillon. You can follow me on Facebook. I'll do live updates there, mm-hmm. but after each ranch or farm, I will do a complete YouTube video com- dedicated to that farm and ranch. Cool. Okay. Um, that's the way they can reach me and Tell them, reach out, because hold me accountable. Hey, yep. Gil, you messed this up. Have you thought about this ranch? Hey, have you thought about this? Please, because I need every. I need to be, I need to learn. So when I fall on my face, when I leave the military, it will be a softer landing. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> That's a good way to look at it. Gil, before we say goodbye, um, is there any last uh, questions you have for us or thoughts you wanted to share? Absolutely, and thanks for giving me the opportunity to ask the question. Um, so I learned so much from you guys, and I'm grateful for you guys to host me. I appreciate the time we spent together and the expertise that you guys in, uh, exposed me to. Mm-hmm. But for my, before I depart, for my Facebook followers and YouTube followers, I'd like to ask you one question if you don't mind. Sure. Fire right. away. What's one piece of advice you would give to someone who wants to farm regeneratively, successfully, and why is that so important to you or collectively as the seven sons? Wow. Why don't you want to go first? Or um, Yeah, I feel like we could tag team this one here and see... Um, yeah. See if our answers are, are similar here. So, um, I think I think something to keep in mind is um, 
you know, the, when you're, when you're jumping into something new like this, you try to, you try to feel like you got to do everything and, and do it all yourself. Um, and over the years, we've, we've really put a lot of intentionality on, um, trying to get things really focused and streamlined, um, because there's, you know, you're starting out in something new and you're excited. Um, you want to try a little bit of everything. Um, and some point, sometimes that, that diversity, we, diversity is good and, um, we want that, but at the same time, it can be a distraction as well. And so the quicker you can, um, just kind of identify like where your niche is, where you want to, uh, where you really want to focus, who's your customer, how are you going to serve them and really start streamlining that. Um, it'll take a lot of the complexity out of, um, you know, you know, like what you talked earlier, like Dr. Williams, Williams uh, uh, article that he wrote about, you know, you got to be an astronaut in order to do this. And the only way you do, you, you overcome that is you either get really strategic partners involved or you simplify it. And um, I would just, I guess, simplicity. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because it's, it's almost like there's this balance with regenerative agriculture. The, the crux of it all and the foundation is diversity. Mm -hmm. um, but, but we need to make a distinction, biological diversity, uh, ecological diversity. That's all good. You want as much as you, as you can, but business diversity uh, is complicated. So you have to balance not letting your, your business, your farm as a business become too complicated uh, di diversity in the soil, biological diversity, that's complex. It manages itself. The more diverse yep. it gets, the more it proliferates, the right. healthier the soil gets. It's a self-managing system. Right. A business is not. It's complicated. It requires your bandwidth to manage. So uh, we see a lot of young regenerative farmers jumping in and just uh, getting overwhelmed with their business a complicated business Cause, cause the last thing you want is, is burnout to set in that's right um, because that takes away your passion for yeah. what you what you started for mm -hmm. um, and so uh so it's just something to balance the, the other thing that i would probably uh, say is just under and, and the guys at soil health academy uh, gabe brown says it all the time understand your context your holistic context uh, and really, it comes down to understanding your resources, what your unfair advantages are, and what your priorities are. What's important to you uh, and, and your community? And, uh, and and think about it from that lens. Uh, holistic management is a program that, that we recommend, um, and it really walks you through how to set a holistic context. What are what are the questions you need to be asking? Um, you know, so yeah, like Blake was saying, so you don't burn out. Part of the part of answering that question of what does it look like to get started and not overwhelming yourself with all the diversity you feel like you have to have up front is understanding your holistic context. Uh, so there's many resources for doing that. Um, uh, holistic management uh, is one of those. It's a, it's a training program. Uh, Alan Savory uh, developed and it, it's great. So, okay. Wow, those are great, phenomenal answers for our listeners out there, especially the young guys. We need to get back to the ind industry, agriculture force and veterans who understands operations and management. We just got Teach me how to spell cow, right? Yep. yep. Uh, but thank you for those. Thank you for the seasoned advice and the wisdom. And I want to consolidate all those advices from each ranch and maybe provide an executive summary in YouTube for you guys because you guys, those advices, what people need to hear, especially the young guys mm -hmm. and veterans. So thank you for sharing your answer. Gil, yeah. it's been a privilege to have you here on our farm all week. Uh, thank you for your service, and we're inspired by your second calling uh, to enter the field of regenerative agriculture. Not only you enter it, but you have a vision for creating a pipeline for uh, fellow veterans to follow in your footsteps. Uh, that's true leadership. Thank you, uh, Gil, for being here. Absolutely. Thank you for creating the access to that program. You bet.